your head. While it does that, take your arms overhead and draw your arms down. Exhale. And exhale. And three. Good. Your knees are long but soft. Four. And five. Six. Seven. Eight. Good. Your knees are soft. Eleven. We're going to keep them soft. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Five more. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. And then twenty. Perfect. Now take this band behind your upper back. You're going to put your palms up towards the corners of the room. Now we're going to press out and return with, uh, with control. Two. Good. Three. I'm going to tilt my screen up just a little bit. Four. Five. Six. There we go. Seven. Low. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eight. Nine. Now your neck is long. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. And you can see I'm keeping my shoulder blades down the back. Controlling the return so the band doesn't win. Wrists are strong and long. Two more. And one. Now we're going to release our shoulders. Take a little breather. Perfect. Let's take a bicep curl. The band is going to go right in the middle and tilt so I'm going to so you can see my feet a little better. In the middle, both feet. In the middle, heel, heel. So I like it so it doesn't think it's going to snap back up towards me. Now at first, take both elbows into flexion. Exhale. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. And three. You're standing tall. Four. And five. Coordinating breath with movement. Six. Seven. Hi, welcome. We're on the bands. Eight. Nine. Getting strong muscles and bones. And primarily focus on the upper body right now. Since it's easier to keep the lower body trained without intervention. But the upper body we pretty much have to go after. So many things are automated. Even rolling up windows and cars are automated. So we got to go after it. Five. Four should be burning. If it's burning too much, just take out one foot. That's a way to modify it. Take two more. Two. Chest and shoulders are open. And one. Now release the band. Shake out your arms like they're noodles. <laughs> and we're going to take the band to the front. You have, I'm going to face that so you can see. Arms are long and hands are like a V. Pull those bands to your chest. Good. Two. Exhale, three, neck is soft, four, five, six, and seven. So from the side, you can see eight, I'm controlling my low back. I'm not letting it do, get too sway. Nine, I've got a little tone below my ribs to keep the abs on. That helps keep the back safe. Five more in a neutral lumbar position as opposed to lordotic overly sway. Three more, two, and one. Now, um, releasing that just for a moment. Now, act like your arms are drying on a clothesline and the wind's blowing. So you have loose sleeves. You're just gonna let the hands hit your low back, let them hit your abs, and just let everything go. Four, three, two, and then come back. We're gonna take that band underneath our heels. Both heels are strong on the band in the middle. Equal sides of the band on either side. Upright row for the shoulders and for the biceps. Knees are long. Exhale. And three. Let me move back so I can see you. Four. Good. Elbows are wider. Five. Then the wrist. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, we're doing 20, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Perfect. Now we're going to use the band as a stretch. So take your band wide like a Y and then lift your arm behind you. Now if it's too hard, take a wider stance on your hands. So this is called dynamic mobility uh, movement. You're going to feel that shoulder blade glide. There it glides down. It goes up and down but without any neck tension. So if you move your neck your head there's no tension and I like this so we're gonna find a place hold perfect five four and check your wrist if you can see them in your vision you don't want them to cock backwards or if you can feel it just tuck the knuckles so they don't let your arms down we're gonna do two more positions and any of those you who've been in rehab you know there's a common stretch called three-way doorway stretch or three-way pec stretch this is simulating it with the down band we're opening up the front body. When your arms are overhead, it's very easy to get sway back. So you want to use your abs to keep your ribs over your pelvis. Take an inhale. Exhale one more. We're going to find one more stretch. You let your arms down also just to get some blood flow. Try any other position. There's three attachments of the pec major. So it's really nice to get three different angles to keep that chest open. The head is tempted to go forward here because the body creates the illusion that it's doing more, but you want to keep your ear in line with the shoulder from the side view, so it looks like that. And that's going to help train the body what a good resting fascial pattern is for posture. Release that. I have to take off my sweater because now we're warming up. Let's do another exercise. The hands are to the front. This is also for the shoulder health. Wrap your hands around your band. Your elbows are your, by your side like you have a ping pong ball underneath your elbows. Keep that ping pong ball between your ribs and your elbow as you open up in external rotation. This is another common rehab exercise that we like to do for prehab. We want to keep our shoulders healthy before we need surgeries, before we need to go to the PT. So this is a flat wrist. This is something you can do without your band, just work breaks if you're feeling like your shoulders are getting rounded forward. It's a great little movement to tell the external rotators to turn on, to recruit. Because normally the internal rotators of the shoulders are just being asked to, to uh, contract all day. So take five more. Exhale as you open. Four. You can tell it's not a huge movement. This is more of an endurance exercise. It's not like a big leg press. It's just a little supportive muscle exercise. Two. And on the one, let that go. Take a little shake, roll, and we're gonna do triceps. So take your handle if you have one. If not, just grab the end of your band. I've got my right hand up. My left hand is finding the band right around the sacrum, the low back. Keep that left hand steady. We're gonna exhale and press up. Inhale and bend. Exhale and press. So let me turn to the side so you can see. It's really easy to get lordotic here. So we got those abs on. Knees are soft to help keep those abs in the good place. It's easy to get the head forward here, but you can keep the ear in line with the shoulder. Exhale, six. The back of the arm, seven. Make sure the band's not pulling your wrist in an awkward position that you have a neutral feel in your wrist, like a piece of plywood there. Let's do 10 more. You should be starting to feel aware of your muscles in the back of the arm. Nine, eight, Good, I like that upright body position. You're not leaning over. Six, so they're starting to get a lot warmer now. Five, see if you can hang in there. Four, for strong triceps. Three, two, this is really important to get out of low chairs or if you do fall, this is the muscle that catches you when you put your arm out. So it's really important to help prevent hip fractures to have a strong tricep. So take this arm. I also think it's a pretty muscle to have strong in the back of the arm. All right, you're gonna push up with your exhale. Inhale, bend. Exhale, push. 
this arm that's holding our hand behind us is going to be open. So the shoulder is down the back, not forward. So we're always training our body where we want it to be when we're doing movement. So it's easier to get it there when we're doing our daily task. <clears throat> Six. Good. Seven. Knees are soft. Eight. Nine. Ten. You're doing great. Should be starting to feel like you're working. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, good, 16, now it's starting to burn, 17, if you have to open up some slack on that band, that's okay, 18, 19, do one more, 20, oh my goodness, that burned, huh? Let's take the interlaced finger position and open up the shoulders and the chest by pulling the hands away from your bootay. So your chest and shoulders. Five, love it. Four, three, two. And then while we're here, let me just show you another stretch. You can hold onto your elbows. So it's not aggressive, but you see how you're just holding onto your elbows? So a lot of people will stand in line like this. And what you can do is when you're standing in line is just hold your elbows like that. And that's just a small little thing you can do during your day to help keep the chest and shoulders open. We're going to do another stretch here, palms together, put your palms together behind your back if they'll go, and if they won't, then go back to that elbow hold. So hold the chest and shoulders open, namaste reverse, or uh, it's also called Anjali Mudra, or prayer pose. Five, four, three, I like it, two, and then let's do one of those little shakes here. And we're going to grab a sip of water, coffee, or tea, whatever you have, and then continue on. So we'll take that. I'm going to offer us a deltoid raise. So with your band, you can step on your band with your right heel. Hold on with your right hand. Now you have a body that's upright, not leaning, as you open up that arm to the side. It's very tempting to lean your body, but we're going to keep that tone in the core so we can get this deltoid and not the neck. Good. Five, lateral raise. Six, and it always takes a couple to figure out where you need to stand on it. Seven, we are going to go to 15. Eight, nine, ten. Take five more. Eleven, so you have a little tone to keep you upright ribs over the pelvis. Twelve, I like it. 13, standing tall. 14, one more. 15, all right, let's do the other side. Stand on that band, heel heavy, lateral raise. We're doing 15, one, so if you need to adjust, you do. Two, good. Three, four, that shoulder feels good. Five, and we're not going over shoulder height for now. Six, especially if you have any kind of impingement. Seven, we're just going to do high benefit, low risk. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. You got it. Twelve, that deltoid's getting stronger. Thirteen, fourteen. We have another 15. All right, we're going to do a frontal raise. Take your right hand, right heel. So same side, same foot. Your arm's going to go to the front like Frankenstein. One, two, without the body leaning back. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, <laughs> puppy Pilates, Michelle, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I wondered where he was yesterday. Take your hand on the other one, heel here, and let's do fifteen to the front. We're going to go exhaling forward, one, exhaling two, good, three. Four, five, 
and you're resisting on the way down. Six, so you get work on the way up. Seven, which is intuitive, but you also want work on the way down. Eight, which your body usually wants to hurry up and let the band go down, but not us. Ten, we're working it both ways, working the negative. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Let that go. Take your band overhead, find a shoulder and a chest stretch. And relax through that chest and shoulders and hold. I like it. Hitting the postural muscles so it's easier to have right upright posture during your day and the shoulders don't get rounded forward. Three, two, inhale. Now on your exhale, relax. We're gonna take a set of push-ups and mix it up. I'm gonna offer that you do them on the wall, but you can do them on the floor if you prefer. I'm just mixing it up. That way you know if you're ever needing a work break during your day, you can always take a set of wall push-ups on the counter, on a wall, so you're bending your elbows, hands about shoulder height. The further you go away from the wall, the harder it is. That's how you manipulate it. Way to go. And you just use what you have. This is how you get creative in keeping your workouts during a busy day. Five, just sneak some in. Six, good, I like how your head's not uh, going forward more than the body, the body's in line. Five, you have a good abdominal tone. Six, seven, we're gonna shoot for 15. Eight, and I know you're doing them on the floor, Shereen, so if it's too hard, just drop two knees for the final five. And we're gonna take five, four, three, two and one i'm so proud of you that was great interlace fingers and open up open up the shoulders and the chest five four looking good nice three two and then just shake it out we're going to grab our uh probably anywhere between two and six pounds we're going to do an overhead press now your exhale if you uh, need more support, you're welcome to sit down. We're gonna we're doing a lighter weight so that we can okay to stabilize. Place your hands about here in your shoulders. Exhale, press up and bend with your inhale. You're gonna exhale and you're keeping your body stable so it doesn't wiggle all over the place. Three, neck is uh, long because you have the shoulder blades down the back. So even though you're lifting your arm, your shoulder blades don't have to get involved. Your upper traps do not get involved. So usually we over recruit those in daily life, unless you're doing something like football or wrestling where you need those huge traps. We're trying to stay out of them and then recruit the lower traps, the sweet little lower lat fibers and the serratus interior instead. It's gonna help keep the shoulder healthier for longer, reduce the chance of impingement syndrome or frozen shoulder. Exhale five, good. Exhale four, exhale three, you got it. Two, and on the one, relax. We're gonna lower those weights down. Take a little arm sway, release some tension. Good, and you notice with these, this is old Chi, tai chi or qigong move. You can actually let the hand just hit you. Four, three, two, and one. We're gonna do a little reverse fly here, so I'm gonna take those weights. Probably anywhere from two to six pounds. You can always change if you need to. And remember, you can always use water bottles or jugs of a drink if you need, So, or laundry detergent. You're gonna go out, so even if you're traveling and you forgot your stuff, you can always find something. I'm gonna be turning to the side so you can see me, but you notice how I have an athletic stance my knees have some force absorption. You notice how my back is, I'll say flat, but the back really isn't flat. It's got its neutral curves. So you have a little inward curve of the lumbar spine, little inward curve of the neck and a healthy back generally. Exhale, reverse fly. But the sit bones lifting helps you keep, um, what we want to avoid is unsupported board flexion. This is pretty bad on the back. So we want to get some tone in there, okay? I'm gonna look down to show you better form for the neck because there are no wrinkles in the neck. Your gaze is probably about two inches, uh, excuse me, two feet, one and a half foot in front of your feet. Five more, four, you're not in your neck. Three, you're in the rear delts. Two, 
Exhale, one. Good, and then let those weights down for just a moment. We're gonna take one little uh, knee bend, so it's like you have a little athletic stance. We'll round out, kind of like a Halloween cat that we do on our hands and knees, and just stretch out through the rhomboids. Take an inhale. Good, on the exhale, stand back up. You can make a yoga gun, which is where you interlace three fingers and the other two fingers are pointed. Yoga gun up and over and elbows magnetized towards each other. Five, your arms are like a frame that your head is within. Four, three, notice how one arm can pull the other. Two, inhale, stretch out those lats, go up and over and hold, and five, and four, and three, and two. Take another inhale. And on your exhale, come back down, give a few shoulder releases. Again, probably two to six pounds, grab your small weights. We'll go out like a T. Let me have those little athletic knees, soft knees. It's like force absorptors. Go out like a T and then back down with control. And exhale. And exhale. Good. And out. Mm-hmm. And five. Had a girl, you can always change the weight. Yep, six, wrist or flat or neutral. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I like it how we're just going to keep it below the shoulders. Twelve, high benefit, low risk. Thirteen, if you have any shoulder issues, you could also decrease that range of motion to keep it in a feel good range of motion and one and then let those down keep them handy though we're going to go to the floor pretty soon grab your band i'm going to move you just a little bit lower so take your camera in a different position if you need to good and you also have a foam roller nearby which i'm going to grab good all right so let's get on that uh, foam roller for the upper back for a moment. I'm going to tilt this down. All right, so your hands are going to be wide on that roller. Keep the band, keep that, keep that band and keep those little weights handy. Elbows wide. Now take an inhale. Lift up, up, up. If you don't have a roller, just put your hands on the floor and do your swans without the foam roller. This is probably one of my ex favorite exercises on the foam roller. I get way too excited about good posture muscles. The stronger these are, the more trained they are, the easier it is to keep that back upright and not let it get it rounded forward. And upright. And lift. And upright. And lift. It's also fun to bias the pinky side of your arm because that tells, neurologically tells your serratus anterior to start contracting, to get a signal, to recruit. And those are shoulder blade stabilizers that without intervention, most people will bypass and get into their upper traps. And you hear about so many people getting shoulder issues. This is one way to keep them away. Hold here, barring any acute injury. Otherwise, hold 10. I'm looking at you, nine, very good. Eight. Nice, Michelle, like that head correction. Betty, maybe chin tuck just the tiniest bit. Yeah, that's great. Five, four, three, two. Now lower down for a moment. You can do that same thing, or when you go up, hold it. Your left arm goes to your left hamstring. Now the right arm is working hard. Now the right arm goes to the right hamstring. Keep the upper, the arm that's on the roller is strong in the lats and the tries. And four, and three, and two, good. Now on the one, both arms go on that roller, go up, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower down, child pose. Press your hips towards your heels. If you need a sip, grab that sip. Perfect. Mm -hmm. and let's do the opposite so this is a more of a plank I'm going to move that foam roller towards the shins for the abs 
you're going to put your elbows down underneath your shoulders and hold on to a normal, stable plank. We just establish stability before we add mobility. Ten. Nine. Now let's add the cues. Your forearms are strong on the floor. That way your shoulder blades are flat on the back. Your head's going to be tempted to drop to the floor. You've got enough tone that your ear is in line with the shoulder from the side. That also strengthens the muscles that help us with posture. Your elbows pull towards your feet and your feet towards your elbows. Your pubic bone towards your sternum, your sternum towards your pubic bone. Energize the legs. Inhale. Now rest any way you want to. Good. We're gonna do a pike, which is where we lift our hips. It's gonna be so fun. Let your elbows down, lift up your hips, and then go along. Now I need to adjust my roller closer to my knee, not on my knee. Lift up your hips and go back to plank. Exhale, lift. This works the abs. Internally rotate the legs so your toes are pointing towards each other. That way you can roll out the shins and not that bone, that tibia. So right now, the abs are screaming. Four more. Exhale, three more. Have to adjust every now and then, that's fine. Two. Now on the one, if you wanna put your knees underneath you and do a child pose with a booty in the air, you can. If you prefer the puppy dog pose, you can do that heel higher than the, uh, over the knees. We're gonna take one called inchworm. The knees are gonna go under and extend. This is a great one for the abs too. I really want you to scoop out the abs. That's what the abs do, they flex the spine. So we're gonna make those abs work. Go out to a long position. Now bend your knees underneath you, tuck and round your spine. Go back into a long plank. Bend your knees, tuck your abs like you are putting an ice cream scoop down your abdominals. Exhale, bend your knees. Toes are towards each other so you roll out your shins. Your shin muscles, not the shin bones. The tibialis anterior is getting rolled out, not the tibia. Adjust your block anytime you need to, your roller. Okay, four more. Ooh, three. Ooh, plus I think we worked our abs hard yesterday. Two. Exhale, relax your hips. Relax, and while you're here, bend your elbows. You can pat yourself on the back, and that's going to get a tricep stretch. Five, four, three, two. Now we're gonna take a knee under to the corner. This is like mogling, so a diagonal inchworm. So press your legs out. Now bend your knees and take them to the left elbow-ish. Go straight, take them to the right elbow-ish. Have to adjust the roller. Bend, diagonal, moguls, diagonal, uh, oblique inchworms. All right, press strong with your elbows, six. Five, four, three, two, and one in rest. Very good. We're going to do one more ab here with the roller and then switch it up. This is the diagonal pike. So you're going to be keeping your knees long, lifting your hips up to one corner, plank, other corner. Here we go. It's going to be great. Inhale, lift your hips to one corner, go to plank. Lift your hips to the other corner, go to plank. Exhale, eight, seven, just readjust anytime you need to, six, five, keep your knees long for more pain if you'd like, Shereen, four, three, two, and one. Oh my goodness, we did so good. All right, we're going to sit down and grab the bands. Keep everything handy. We will, we will come back to those foam rollers. Grab a sip if you need. I definitely need it. All right, you're gonna sit on your bootay, legs out in front, adjust your britches. Those bands come to the heel arch area. We're gonna cross that strap, choke up on your uh, band, bend your elbows. Now the back is a pretty strong muscle. Uh, let me go back to something. So your feet have this bone, the fifth metatarsal styloid process. So if that band is on it, it probably won't feel good. So go a little lower than it, where it's a little beefier in your heel, where your heel meets your arch. This is one that you could actually use two bands on because your back's pretty strong. Either that or a heavy band or do more reps. So you wanna feel some biceps. You wanna feel your rear shoulder. That a girl. 
I like it. And bend. You see how your chest is open? Hold on. <coughs> Coffee makes me sneeze anymore. Don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Bend your elbows. Now you're pulling. Your shoulders, see how they're staying down the back? Let's flip it so the palm faces the sky like you have a cup of soup in your hand. All right. Hold 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. You can feel the good posture muscles getting strengthened here, right? Three, two, and one. All right, just a little shake. Now we are going to do an external rotation. Take your handles or the end of your bands and you can either, I'm going to give you a choice, take your palms like you're holding a cup of soup and keep your elbows glued and open, or you can do them like you're holding a hammer and your thumb is up. Whatever feels like you can maintain good wrist alignment with whatever tool you're using. So right now I have the bands with the elastic tubings with the handles, so the, the hammer grip feels good. Yeah, just play around. See if you can keep your wrist pretty neutral. Let me turn to the front so you can see. The chest is open, the shoulders are open. And look at right, right and left, see if you can match symmetry. Sometimes one arm wants to do a little more than the other or less, so can you match symmetry? Four, three, two, very good, one. Now I'm gonna throw in a gentle stretch, so get your arms really tall, like someone's pulling your spine out of your pelvis. Exhale forward, fold towards your feet. If this is too hard, you can sit on the roller or you can bend the knees. Let your neck socket soften. On this stretch, seated hamstring stretch, we really want to make sure we're in the hamstring, not the knee, and not the booty, especially not the booty attachments. If the ischial tuberosity, that's where people end up getting hurt when they do the stretch aggressively. So air on the side of conservative. Five. It's a gentle back of the leg stretch in lumbar. Four. Calf. Three. Two. Inhale to come back up and take those bands. I have them crossed as an X in the front. You're going to open up your rear flies. So we did these with a small weight standing. Now we're doing these with a band because I love to bias that back body that would normally get neglected and people start looking rounded like a question mark, but not us. We're going to work on those back muscles. All right, you've got a little pause you can do at the rear end, rear end of that range of motion where your body is checking in. Yep, I'm working my posterior deltoid. All right, we've got it. Five, I like it, like, like it, everybody looks good. Four, lifting up, good. Three, two, one. Now uncrash, uncross your straps. Now we're gonna lean back in an ab crunch. So this is gonna be a twofer. Use your abs. I'm gonna soften the knees a little bit so that creates some uh, mobility in my lumbar spine. I've got my abs on. We're gonna bend the elbows. So we've got abs and biceps. If you lift your elbow a little bit, you have a little bit more intensity. If you lower it, it's a little easier. Another way to make it harder is to go back a little bit more in your torso. Every exhale is an opportunity to pull your belly in. You see those biceps though, and you see your wrist are straight. 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Sit back up. That was great. Now make an X. See how one arm's going high and one arm's going low? Rear fly, but with a little different angle than we did before. One arm's high, one arm's low. Lift up tall. See if you can work those erector spinae muscles. That's what keeps your back upright. Okay. Eight, woo, seven, doing great. Six, five, the jawline is about parallel to the floor. Four, three, two, and one. Perfect job, I love it. Now get rid of your band for a moment and come back to your roller, sideways obliques, uh, sideways plank. We're gonna stagger our feet so that you have a little X 
Left foot in front of the right, right elbow underneath your shoulder. Now just stability, hold the plank. 10, nine, eight, good. Seven, six, five, four, three. Now the descent is pretty important here too. You lower your hip, you never just collapse in your shoulder when you're done. And let's do the other side. The roller goes to the other side. Let your legs stagger like a little X. Arm up, hold. I like how that hip, see how that hip is tempted to drop? You lifted it, that was good. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Lift your hip a half an inch, Shireen. See if you feel any difference. There you go, four, three, two. With control, lower your hip and turn around. Now the roller's underneath our ankles. Fingers towards your booty for most of us. Lift up your booty and hold. And hold 10. Good, nine, good, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower your hips, perfect. Now we're gonna go back to that front plank, the one that burns the most. And we're gonna do one called four points of light where you pull, you pull your knees underneath you and you t pivot your knees left, center, and right, center, and go back. So I'll cue us, elbows down strong, take yourself in a plank. Okay, now the first move is bend your knees, pause. Now turn left, now center, now turn right, center, shoot those legs back in a plank. Now we have to switch which side we start with. So we're gonna go center, turn right, center, turn left, center, go back plank. Here we go. Under, left, center, right, Center, go back. Patterning like this is also good for preventing neural decline. Knees under, go right, center, left, center. Go back, again, two more sets. Come under, knees left, center, knees right, center. Shoot back plank, here we go. Exhale, knees under, shoot right, center. Shoot left, go back, rest any way you need to. I'm gonna take a child's pose with my ankles on the roller, but any kind of rest you need. And hold five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect job. Sideways plank, elbow on the mat, feet on the roller. We're gonna do a thread the needle eight times. Inhale, lift up that little arm. Here we go. Your torso and your arm can thread the needle. Your hips stay the same. They're like headlights shooting towards me. Two. They're not moving. Three. Now you have a, a relatively four. You have a little bit of instability in that roller, so they're a little harder. Five, then on the floor, which is a stable surface. Six, stay strong. Seven, lift those hips. Here we go. Eight, finish strong. Lower that hip with control. Let's do the other side. That was great. Other side. Stagger your feet. You're in a vasistasana. Uh, That's what it's called in yoga. It's a uh, side plank. Okie dokie. Here we go. Up. Now, rotate. One. Exhale. Two. Ah, feels so good on this side. It's like fresh, fresh meat. No soreness. Four. Until we start getting to the end. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Really good. Let's do one more side plank. So take it over to the other side. The feet stagger, the elbows underneath. We're gonna do up and over for eight. So I want you to imagine there's this beautiful rainbow. I think I told you I saw a double rainbow the other day. We're gonna take that hand here and go up and over and hand to your hip and up and over. Paint this beautiful rainbow. Three, four, Five, beautiful. Six, so strong. Seven, doing great. Eight, and lower that hip. Very good, let's head it to the other side. You guys are doing so great. Feet stagger, so good. We're gonna do eight paint the rainbows. Beautiful day. Let's paint a beautiful rainbow on this beautiful day. Up, two, beautiful. 
three, I'm gonna readjust my arm to make it vertical, it's worth it. Four, five, head back. Six, good, head's in line with the rest of the back. Seven, eight, and rest. Good. Now I want to give you either a set of push-ups on the floor or, I don't know, I'm going to show you like these better, or a set of presses like this with a weight anywhere from 3 to 12 pounds. Please take whichever one of these you need, roughly 15 to 20 reps. What I want you to do is find a place where you can do uh, go to fatigue in your final rep. So if you want to do push-ups, so I'm just showing both, please monitor your own count slash fatigue at the final reps with good form, fatigue with good form. So the other push-ups you could do are square push-ups or knee push-ups or toe push-ups. All right, I like what I see. Good, I like what I see. It's great. Good, I like the slow descent. Five. Good, that's it, Sheree. You can go right into those. We'll meet. Three. Two and one. Now eventually I'm just gonna meet you guys on the floor on our backs. Michelle Betty, I see you there, so just stay. And were they probably a smaller weight? You might be able to get by with the same weight. We're gonna do a flat. So let your feet be on the floor. Take your weights, touch them, they kind of ding in the middle. Act like you're hugging a tree. Open up your arms. Now hug a tree. Together, open up. So I am going to re reiterate my safety. Uh, concern on this one because I had a girl who uh, my little soul sister I've known since age four who's not an exerciser who did them on her own and did not ask me but I'm just telling you what she did she hurt herself she let her wrist kind of go backwards and hit the floor so you want to maintain that form and if anything hits the floor maybe the upper arm but in this you have a hug a tree don't go to this big full range of motion on these you're doing a little um, hug a tree Five. So if you're hypermobile, if you know your joints bend backwards, you want to make sure they're not taking over and like just going full range of motion, weights hitting the floor. Two. Less is more <sighs> to avoid that injury. Okay, one. Now I'm going to get rid of this for a minute and take a full body stretch. Arms long, legs long, and shift through your arms, shift through your legs. So you're going to make sure that you're getting a big stretch. And this is another one for the back. So let your, if you have a roller, please grab it underneath your booty. Let your feet be on the roller and go up and down. So curl and curl. And the glutes are working. If you're not sure, put your fingers on the glutes. They should be firing. A lot of people have a glute amnesia, especially when we have to sit all day for jobs or if you sit for long periods of time for other reasons. So you just, you want those booty muscles to fire. That's gonna help the back be healthy. Now each vertebra of your back goes individually off the floor, like you're peeling a sticker off the mat. Those of you that would like to add on, either stay up or add a foot back and forth, your rollers back and forth. That'll get your hamstrings, 10, nine, and I'm gonna hold mine, eight, seven, while I look in cue, six, good, five, Four, three, two, inhale, and exhale, lower back down. Now take a happy baby, hands to the feet so your knees are on either side. Five, four, three, two. And on the one, we're gonna do the IT band. This is probably one of my favorite rolls with the uh, roller. So take your band underneath your side leg, your elbows on the floor, and one foot, you see how this top foot can be on the floor to get some weight off? Michelle, I think you said these were really helpful. Shereen, I'm sure they're good for you because of the activities I know you do for cardio. This is, uh, most people can benefit from IT. Now you can start rolling out that, near where the attachments are on the hip and even towards the gluteal fascia. So it's sort of like up in your hip bone, the pelvis. It's hard to go wrong on this area and then lower than your hips, so it's like the high part of your upper lateral thigh. Roll towards the floor a little bit, you get that TFL, that tensor fascia lata. Go down a little bit, you'll get more medial, uh, mid IT. And what I'm not doing is rolling out the knee itself. I'm gonna stay two inches shy of the knee. 
But if you've had knee pain and if you've had lateral hip pain, this is miracle. Go back and forth, see if you're breathing. Deviating forward towards the floor is going to get that vastus lateralis. That's still good. Deviating back is going to get that hamstring, that lateral hamstring. That one that when we stretch it across the body is so tight. So just have fun. Now you see I'm using good side plank muscles too. Five, four, three, two. Now on the one, what we can do before we switch sides is just look at your legs. You can feel them. See if one, like mine's a little longer now, the right one. And this right side just feels a little relaxed now and dropped. Let's take the other side. If you need a step before you get there, please help yourself. But let's get, let's get that outer, uh, that IT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right foot, left leg. Here we go. Now, kind of, we started up near the greater trochanter. It's okay to roll towards the sky a little or towards the floor a little. You're exploring. You can even go between the hip and the ilium, the greater trochanter and the ilium, the pelvis. Yeah. So you've got the normal breath, rhythmic breathing. All right, IT band, go a little lower than that. Now, if you are been working it out or you're not sore, you can put your feet like this, like I have them stacked. Get that TFL, that tensor fascia lata, that little three finger wide muscle where your left front pocket is. That's a nemesis, it sometimes takes over as a uh, primary hip flexor and it's not supposed to be primary, it's supposed to be secondary accessory. So roll that out. It'll feel like you have quarters in your pocket. I'm going to head down a little lower. Roll out that side leg IT band. That's fascia. But when you roll back, you get a little a lateral hamstring. When you roll forward, you get that vastus lateralis, that lateral quad. And these cross the knee. So when this is all tight, you can feel your knee hurts laterally usually. And this will relieve it. The IT band doesn't usually tell you it's tight. It usually tells you in the form of a tight hip or a tight knee. So just see what's going on. I'm going to head a little lower, but I'm not rolling out the knee. Breathing. Five. Four. Three. Feels so good. Two. Feels so good and bad. And one. And then relax. Very good. Okay, we're going to hit that amazing lat muscle, which is one of my favorites to get if you have internally rotated shoulders. So notice how it feels if you just even want to touch. How does that feel? How's that feel? And then we're going to get that armpit. So right where your um, arm, there's a, the lat twist right here at the base or the behind of the um, armpit. So take your roller underneath that armpit and roll like your feet, like you're going to look at the sky a little bit. And you see how I'm just using my booty to push me back and forth like a little inchworm? <sighs> Hot dog. So you might already feel some trigger spots. And let me just remind us about the trigger spot. If you feel a really hot, exquisite point of pain, not hot as in uh, temperature, but just very acute, exquisite pain spot the size of a nickel, let's say, you can sink on it and breathe and let that change over about 90 seconds. Sometimes you can have release before the 90 seconds, but that's just a general rule of thumb. If you roll back, you get a little rear delt. You're going to find something, but that lat, it's a big muscle. It's the biggest one on the back, and it influences low back. It can create pain if it's tight. It can create shoulder internal rotation because it's an internal rotator. So it can kind of make you look like a gorilla in the arms if these are tight. Also really uh, important for breath and for posture. Go back and forth. And just explore. It's hard to hurt. I don't want you to roll out your ribs, but you can pretty much explore other places. I've got something going on that rear delt. And what's cool is uh, it's, if you get it before, it's hurting. So I don't have any pain right now, but like I'm getting that trigger point now, keeping ahead of something that could create pain. Find your spots. That lat, though, it almost always needed it because so many activities are forward. Five, 
four. It's hard to come off when it feels so therapeutic, right? Three, two. This is so good for the low back, even though it seems like we're just rolling out the shoulder area. This attaches at the low back, so it can really influence low back health. Before you hit the other side, let's just see. How does that feel? Amazing, spacious, light. How, see how that breath is easier to get in there? Train your body to take advantage of that new space so that it doesn't go back to the old tight short space, contract it. Now just for uh, bilateral comparison, nice. And I didn't even think my right side was tight, but I can tell the difference on the left and the right after having rolled it. Let's go to the other side. So the body really responds well to stretches and to uh, releases, myofascial releases. Left that little arm underneath your the roller. Good. Go back and forth. Use your hips to inchworm yourself forward and back. Forward and back. Rolling back, you can feel some rear delt or infraspinatus or tress minor. You'll feel something. Pretty much trying to stay on muscle. I'm not really rolling out my ribs. Yep, you're just using your hips or your feet. Keep the breath. And then scan the other body parts that accidentally tense in, in uh, response to uh, stress. Your eyes, your hands. So just let those muscles relax. Go back and forth. Back and forth. I'm so proud of you guys. It was so good. For some reason, sometimes it's hard to talk yourself into doing a foam roller on your own until we have pain, so it's really, I'm really proud of us for doing it before. So good for posture, so good for shoulders. Back and forth. On the YouTube page, there's a whole hour, 10 minute, complete foam roller workout that if you ever have any individual page, you can scan through and find your areas, or if you're just feeling like you want the whole thing, it's free. And then there's some little foam roller videos on the Aaron Go, to Aaron Go Girl YouTube, so help yourself. All right, let's do five more. Four, three, two. All right, before we get off of this, we all have rollers. Let's get that upper back, one of my favorite areas. I know I say that, but whatever I'm rolling is my favorite area. So lift up your booty and put this on your upper back. Now at first, if you look down your knees, you're getting a little flexion. How's that feel on your rhomboids? Experiment, can you do a little back bend? Maybe you can do a little deviation right for that right shoulder blade attachments. A rhomboid, I mean, or to the left. So explore. And roll it out. Roll it out. Let's take five more. Four, three, two. Now we are going to take a passive extension for the back. Let me show you a couple ways to do it. You can put your hands behind you and rest. Some of you might be able to put your head down. That usually takes a pretty flexible upper back and a long neck. That's how I'm built, so that one's easy for me, but most people need a pillow. So if you need a pillow behind your head, please do. So I'm going to look. Try the roller lower on your shoulder blade, uh, Shireen, just a little bit. Yeah, like the lower shoulder blade. So it's underneath your sternum. If, if your neck is creased too much, grab a pillow. Don't have any shame about that. And the feet on the floor is going to help keep your lumbar spine. Some people need a pillow underneath the booty as well. The main goal is to let it be so relaxing that you can relax your muscles. Your upper back, your lower back, they respond to stretching myofascial release, and passive extension. Passive extension is what we're doing right now. Let the breath expand those areas in between the ribs. Five, four, Three, two, now with care, tuck your chin and let your back go flat on the mat. I want you to feel how incredibly flat your upper back feels. 
compared to how it was. Uh, it's like pancakes, right? Rest. If you have a chair handy or a wall handy and you'd like to take feet up on the wall for a minute, please do. This is so good for circulation. So good. And if you want to use that roller underneath your sacrum to get some decompression of that lumbar spine, which usually has compression during our day, you can do that too. So I'm demoing. Your hands can go to your belly. Let your breath go to your diaphragm. Let your eyes close or soften. That's going to prompt the parasympathetic system to start healing the body. When you notice inflections of sympathetic system during your day, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, heightened cortisol, it's really important to have some times during your day when you bring back that body into a healing state. So all is well. You can let yourself have a mantra, a word. A mantra just means mind tool that is going to help you today. Sort of like a little handle. It could be peace. It could be the word release. Whatever word comes to mind. If you don't have one, we'll use the word release and you're just inside repeating that. Every exhale you release. 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 So you have no identifiers, no labels, no one wants anything from you. There's nothing to figure out. There's nothing to do. You're just experiencing your truest essence in Sanskrit. That's your Purusha, who you are without your labels, without your identifiers. So take a moment to notice how it feels to be so free and gently come off your roller and gently slide to a sideline position, eventually to a seated position where you're facing the front of the room and let your hands come over your heart, one over the other, and then come back to that little mantra that you had, your mind tool, setting an intention for the rest of your day. If you don't have one of your own that comes, you can use the one release so that when you accidentally feel inflected by your environment, you can come back to be in control of your internal environment, your own healing cave that you're, you've created for safety and sanctuary. Release. 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 So that you're letting all that stuff in the external world go because you care so much about how you feel inside that you're not going to let it disturb your peace. Make an intention of that for the rest of your day. And whenever you're ready, let your eyes come into the room with so much care, with so much appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. You look amazing. Great to see you. Bye.